This, I think, is probably one of my favorite of all the architectural buildings that I'm going to show you. Um, it's uh, called the Laminata House. And it's um, designed by the architects of Kroenenberg van Erf um, of uh, Lederdam, Netherlands. And it is in the Netherlands. Um, and from the outside, it actually appears like Philip Johnson's glass house. But if you look at this drawing, the shaded area, you can see that um, uh, there's something very different about the interior of this house. Uh, in the sketch, what we see is actually uh, 10,000 glass laminations. So uh, the walls, as you can see here, are uh, laminated glass. Um, an unbelievable feat. I find it really quite humorous that uh, he's got a window inside of a glass wall. And uh, then they hang art on an art wall which is glass, so yeah, it's one of my favorite buildings probably anywhere. The unfortunate thing, I, I talked to, uh, to the architect uh, a couple of months ago. He uh, unfortunately told me the house no longer exists. Uh, they, um, they tore it down. It was very controversial. Uh, lots of people loved it. So again, Herzog and de Miron, this is their extremely playful Prada store in Tokyo. It's very unusual in its use of glass. Although um, all of the glass is transparent, it focuses on the form of the glass rather than its color. And according to Herzog and de Miron themselves, the ambivalent, always changing and oscillating character of the building is heightened by the uh, sculptural effect of the glass skin. The rhomboid-shaped grid in the facade is clad on all sides with a combination of convex, concave, or flat uh, panels of glass. The differing geometries generate faceted reflections which enable viewers to view inside and outside of the building to see constantly changing pictures and almost cinematic perspective of products, the city, and themselves. This is in Italy. This is in Milan. It's uh, in a conference center. Uh, Studio Fuscas. This enormous glass ceiling is on a scale seldom seen. Its vibrant form twists and turns and dives with waves and funnels and spouts. This glass roof harkens back to the Crystal Palace, but truly takes its rhomboid shapes to a completely new level of artistic expression. This project also could never have been executed without the sophisticated software used to create them. The sweeping funnel-like forms are not only visually dynamic, but function as a support structure for the roof. Uh, so there are a number of exhibition buildings that run off of this, and this is kind of like an arcade that you walk under. Frank Gehry. LA-based Canadian architect Frank Gehry's innovative response to the DG Bank Building Project in Berlin, completed in, 19, in 2001, uh, shows that he is an architect whose interest is in structure is akin to that of a sculptor. This project also references the past with its glazed ceiling by recalling the Crystal Palace again of 1951. However, its unusual juxtaposition of organic form gives uh, it a contemporary sculptural twist. His use of computer software designing the roof has allowed him to give subtle and beautiful uh, curvilinear form. Frank Gehry is arguably one of the world's um, most creative architects. His work uh, tends to be extremely sculptural uh, in its execution. He claims to have associated more closely with artists in the early stages of his career than with architects. Uh, in addition to uh, his work as an architect, his firm, uh, Frank Gehry and Partners, is responsible for creating new software that has allowed him and other architects to create uh, with more freedom than architects have ever experienced in the past. This is an interior shot. Frank Gehry's long relationship with artists has resulted in some of his work being pure sculpture and not architecture at all, uh, such as his glass fish located at the Walker Art Institute in the uh, Botanical Garden. Uh, in, in the uh, sculpture park. Um. So this is uh, what Frank Gehry did in Chicago. Now Chicago, I'm going, I'm going to move, I'm moving into um, public art here at this point, and Chicago is probably one of the most dynamic public art cities in the world. Millennium Park in Chicago is without a doubt, without much debate rather, the most successful public art project in the world. Again, Frank Gehry is involved. Unique among urban centers, Millennium Park reflects the people and city of Chicago. Millennium Park has been the template for bringing new life to Chicago's center. Uh, the park is one of the most ambitious undertakings in Chicago's history. Gary's project was the J. Pritzker Pavilion, an outdoor concert venue. One of the park's biggest stars, however, is uh, Cloudgate, 
created by UK artist Anish Kapoor. The 110 ton ellipt elliptical sculpture is forged of seamless sections of highly polished steel. This work is extraordinarily popular with locals and visitors. It entices people to interact playfully with it and gives Chicagoans a sense of place as, uh, as they see reflections of themselves and their city within the work. Equally playful and engaging is a Spanish artist, um, Juan Plinza's 50-foot glass block towers. They are actually LED video projection screens that project the images of some 2,000 Chicago citizens. The images appear to be still until one blinks or smiles. When uh, the projected faces then purse their lips and water spouts out with a gush into a, into a little pond. Millennium Park continues uh, a long tradition of public art in Chicago. When uh, the park was being conceived, Chicago was already one of the world's capitals of public sculpture. It boasts a Calder, a Du Buffet, a Miro, and a Picasso, all within a few blocks of each other within the city center. The Picasso in uh, Daly Square was uh, undoubtedly the crown jewel. It was unveiled in 1967. I believe in the nearly universal desire of, for human beings to give meaning to their environment through the creation of art. This has remained consistent since the, the time of early human cave drawings. All that have changed are the ideas, approaches, and technologies of both architects and artists. Art is an essential component of the built environment, and the lives of human beings are altered by the art that they encounter, sometimes by chance or sometimes routinely in their daily lives. This understanding drives my desire to create art in the public sphere.